One of the great things about Las Vegas is it's always changing. There's always new things to see whenever you visit. In this video, I'm gonna give you my annual update of what's new in Las Vegas for 2022, sharing with you the new things that opened in the past year and what's coming this year to help you plan your trip so you get to see the new stuff. I'll be sharing with you the new hotels, the new restaurants, new attractions, new entertainment, and I'll also be sharing with you some of the perhaps negative trends that are coming to Vegas to make you spend more money quicker as companies try to do here. Now, if you're getting to Vegas by airplane, the first new thing you'll notice is the airport. Okay, the airport's not new, but the airport has a new name. It used to be called McCarran International Airport, and now it's called Harry Reid International Airport. Okay, let's move on to new hotels, and probably the most significant new hotel to open in the past year is Resorts World. This has been in development for a long, long time, and it is the most expensive hotel to ever have been built in Las Vegas at $4.3 billion. It is epic, it is extravagant, it harkens back to the days when like the Bellagio and the Mirage just captivated everybody. That's how I feel about the resorts world. Inside, there's 40 restaurants and bars. There's a really awesome food court that specializes in Asian eats. Now, while resorts world is open, it's definitely still in development. They're opening new things all the time. They're building the Vegas Loop to come here that we're gonna talk about later. You'll still see construction and lots of things that say coming soon here. If you wanna see more about what's inside resorts world, I'll have a whole video tour walkthrough coming up soon, so make sure you subscribe for that. Now, one maybe little bummer about Resorts World is for hotel guests, they used to offer free valet parking. Unfortunately, that's no more. If you want to valet park as a hotel guest, it'll now cost you $21. If you're wondering where free parking still is along the Las Vegas Strip, well, I have the answer for you. You'll find it at the Tropicana, Treasure Island, Venetian, Palazzo, Sahara, Wynn, and the Circus Circus. Oh, and Resorts World. Actually, Resorts World has free self-parking. It's just the valet parking that's gonna cost you. In addition to Resorts World, there's one other new hotel in town. Well, well new-ish. It's the Virgin Hotel Las Vegas. This replaced the former Hard Rock Hotel, so it's not a new construction like Resorts World is. It is a remodel, rebrand, refinish of the former Hard Rock Hotel. It has kind of a modern, funky vibe, hip inside. Um, interesting to visit and walk around and see it. It's also unique because the casino is operated by a Native American tribe. And you'll also find a lot of British elements in the room. For example, the trash cans don't say trash or garbage, they say rubbish. But uh, if you're considering staying at the Virgin Hotel, note that I did have some cleanliness issues in my rooms. Yes, rooms. Stay tuned for the full room reviews to hear and see more about that. And the Virgin Hotel, just like Resorts World, is also affiliated with Hilton Honors. So if you're a Hilton Honors member and you're staying here, you'll get like 12 bucks for breakfast and you'll get Hilton points for your stay. The Encore has decided it's gonna be a dog-friendly hotel. What does that mean? Well, it means that dogs are now welcome and if you bring your dog, your dog will get a little welcome package including a dog neckerchief, a dog treat, and a dog toy. So dogs welcome at the Encore. Pay your respects to the Mirage Hotel while you can. It's been sold. The Hard Rock International Group has purchased the Mirage. They intend to replace it with a guitar-shaped hotel, which means the volcano is going to be going away within the next few years. So make sure you check it out while this classic piece of Vegas is still here. Changes are coming to the Cosmopolitan because it has a new owner. MGM has purchased the Cosmopolitan, which means it will likely be leaving the Marriott affiliation and joining M-Life, which means it's going to be affiliated with Hyatt Properties. MGM has also announced that they may consider developing another South Strip property. Pretty much all their hotels are here in the South Strip. They particularly mentioned that in front of the Excalibur, there's some developable land. What will it be? Still not sure. Caesars Palace is getting a grand new entrance lobby. This is supposed to be done for the 1st of January. Construction was furiously underway when I was here. What's going to be in the middle? There's going to be a big statue of guess who? Julius Caesar. But my favorite thing to happen at any hotel in Las Vegas this year is at the Bellagio. Finally, they got rid of the revolving door from the bridge to the Caesars Palace. And so now it's really nice you can get into the Bellagio without having to wait in line for five minutes to go through the revolving door. The Bacchanal Buffet has reopened at Caesars Palace and it's been reopened for a little while, but actually the most exciting part about its reopening is it now takes reservations. You no longer have to stand in the really long line to eat here. Instead, you can make a reservation on open table. Prices have gone up. 
dinner is $81.27. And if you do want to eat here, you might want to make a reservation about two months in advance because it's that popular. Now there's other buffets that have reopened in Vegas, but if you're looking for the top end buffet, look no further than Bacchanal. At the Wynn, they recently did a remodel of their Parasol Up Lounge. It's now called the Overlook Lounge. A little bit more of a moody vibe. Why is it called the Overlook Lounge? Well, it overlooks their nighttime show, the lake that's in the center of the Wynn. It's also right above Parasol Down, which has these really neat circular escalators. They're not new, but I just love to ride them up, down, up, down, up, down. You can take those a few times if you want to. That's a free ride in Vegas. The other new eating establishment at the Wynn is the Delilah Supper Club. What is a supper club, you ask? Well, it's a place that kind of has a 1920s vibe to it. They have entertainment, they have dancing, and they have expensive prices. Fish and chips here is gonna cost you $72. You can also get a caviar service for $225. Interesting note, they do not allow photography, posting, or of course, video inside. But uh, you know it's cool because it's got this little green velvet rope around it. This place is so popular that reservations are booked out for months. And if you do get one, they limit the table time to only two hours. Now, if you take it into Delilah at the Wynn, you've got another new supper club option, the Mayfair at the Bellagio. This one actually has some windows so you can see inside. And it's also got that 1920s swanky vibe. Now, quite at the other end of the spectrum from supper clubs is the Olive Garden. And the Olive Garden actually just Open the new location here on the Las Vegas Strip. It's actually right up above me right there in the Showcase Mall, which is like the big Coke bottle behind me right there. And now foodies may scoff at the Olive Garden, but they're all you can eat soup, salad, and breadsticks for $12.49, I think is one of the best all you can eat values on the Strip right now. Also right next to Olive Garden, there's a new Target store, um, which if you're looking for provisions, I always used to recommend Walgreens or CVS, but this Target is where it's at. And if you wanna pre-fuel for a night on the town, well, they've got a walk-in beer cave with quite a big selection of cold beers at reasonable prices. And if you wanna do this kind of neat, immersive flyover ride, it's called Flyover. It's right next to the Hard Rock Cafe, which is like two doors down from the Olive Garden. 34 bucks and you can like fly over some varied sites. It's sort of like Soarin' at California Adventure, but here in Las Vegas. Now, if you're looking for delicious Chinese food, look no further than Din Tai Fung, newly opened at the Aria Hotel. This is Northern Chinese food from Din Tai Fung chain from Taiwan. They specialize in Shaolong Bao, which are small, juicy soup dumplings. And you can see their chefs making them here. It's the holidays, so they're wearing Santa's hats. At Harris, you'll find a new celebrity chef outpost, Bobby's Burgers by guess who? Bobby Flay. You'll find this in the Fulton Street Food Hall right to the entrance of the Caesars Forum. A burger here is going to set you back a cool 13 bucks. Add fries, that'll be another six. And also fairly new to the Grand Canal shops is Smith and & Walensky. And you might be thinking, Chris, why are you showing me gondolas? Smith & Walensky is right up there, right above the main gondola turnaround. This is a classic steakhouse that used to be on the Strip, now here in the Venetian's Grand Canal shops. There's another celebrity chef restaurant opening at the Link Hotel, you know, right next to this high roller here. The star of the Cake Boss reality series on TL LC is opening a restaurant in the back called the Boss Cafe. Look for it towards the link entrance to the Caesars Forum. Dominique Ansel, the creator of the Cronut in New York City, that super popular pastry is gonna be opening a bakery at Caesars Palace in 2022. It's supposed to be somewhere near the Gordon Ramsay Pub and Grill. I'm looking forward to some tasty Cronuts in Las Vegas. Nobu plans to open its third Vegas location at the Paris Hotel sometime in 2022. Other two locations you'll find at Caesars Palace and at the Virgin Hotel. The Circus Circus Hotel is a new food court where you'll find an Einstein's Bagels, a Popeye's, a Pickup Sticks, a Dairy Queen. And then there's also a new arcade, which I find a little bit more interesting. This is underneath the Midway. So lots of fun crane games for kids, driving games and shooting games for the bigger kids. Now, Las Vegas' coolest new attraction is definitely Omega Mart. This is in the Area 15 complex, which opened about a year and a half ago, but Omega Mart opened in 2021. It is a supermarket. It is a museum. It is an art exhibit. It is trippy. It is a crazy thing. It's really hard to explain 
but you definitely should come and see it. It's not cheap, it's $49, uh, but I think it's worth it. If you wanna see more of my walking tour through it, uh, that'll be coming out soon. You'll find a link to that in my whole uh, Vegas playlist if you wanna see more on Omega Mart to decide whether you really wanna come or not, but I think you should. And while you're in Omega Mart, definitely check out the rest of Area 15. There are like 10 or 15 different attractions in here. You can throw axes, there's an arcade. You can go on like a new school type of sort of like zip line thing that runs around the roof of it. You can easily spend a whole day in Area 15, but I would say no less than three hours, no less than two in Omega Mart, and then another hour browsing Area 15 itself. Now, while you're at Area 15, check out the new restaurant in it that recently opened called The Beast by Todd English. Uh, they specialize in barbecue. Right here, I've got their brisket sausage sandwich, and I've got their mac and cheese in the skillet. Let me tell you, this is pretty tasty. I already took one bite, so I know it's tasty. But inside, you can see there's a there's a hot link and there's the brisket. Really good. One attraction that I'm particularly excited for is the opening of the Pinball Hall of Fame Museum on the Las Vegas Strip. This is located just about a quarter mile south of the Mandalay Bay. It used to be a couple miles off the Strip, but they just opened this location with their really huge sign that says Pinball. This place is a museum and an arcade. There's no admission fee. All of the machines take quarters. If you love pinball, definitely check out this place. Now, if you find yourself in town for a convention, you might find your at Caesars Forum. This is the newest convention center. It is located right between Harrah's and the Link Hotels. And with the opening of the Caesars Forum, they built a new little shortcut area that you can take to go between Harrah's and the Link on the backside. Planet Hollywood is going to be remodeling their Miracle Mile shops. It's probably about time because a portion of it is still from the old Aladdin Hotel right here, the old Desert Passage. But if you liked the rain shower show that was here, check that out now because there's going to be construction throughout the next year to overhaul this whole thing. Also kind of bad news out of Planet Hollywood, the free parking that they've always had is finally gone. They're charging for parking here, so rest in peace and free parking at Planet Hollywood. And coming to the city center complex is an entirely new shopping center known as Project 63. It's currently under construction. When it does open, it'll be right next to the existing shopping center, Crystal. On the subject of entertainment, Adele is getting her first Las Vegas residency. It's going to be at the Caesars Palace Coliseum, January through April 2022. Now over at Resorts World, Celine Dion recently announced the cancellation of her residency there, but they quickly replaced her with the announcement of Michael Bublé's residency in April and May of 2022. So now that we know about all the new stuff coming to Vegas, I want to share with you about some of the trends you'll see in 2022. The first one is that international visitors are back. International travel returned to Vegas in November of 2021, which is a good thing because international visitors spend 50% more than us domestic visitors so that is good to Vegas conventions I think will start to come back in 2022 but I don't think we'll see a full return to conventions in 2022 we can expect that in 23 or 24 some of the negative trends poker rooms are closing many of the strip hotels have closed their poker rooms in particular the poker rooms at the Flamingo Rio Link Planet Hollywood and Binion's are no more so now you might be asking yourself Chris if the Rio closed their poker room where's the World Series of poker going to be for 2022. It's going to be at Paris and Bally's for 2022 World Series of Poker. Kino rooms are another Vegas trend going the way of the dodo. This past year, seeing the closure of the Kino rooms at the Fremont, the Four Queens, and the El Cortez. If you do want to play Kino, there's three left downtown at the California, the D, and the Plaza Hotel. The three remaining Kino rooms on the Strip are at the Excalibur, Bally's, and Harris. Now, a trend that only has one data point, but I don't like it, is on the note of those voucher ticket redemption things that you get out of the slot machine where they don't give you coins, they don't give you your money back, but you can typically go to a machine in the casino and get your 50 cents while at Caesars Palace Hotel there's no more coins in the redemption machine if you want to redeem it you have to take it to the casino cage counter and have the cashier give you your 50 cents who's going to do that that's just them nickel and diming you for 50 more cents speaking of coins slot machines that give out coins that's another one that's going the way of the dodo there is only one hotel left on the strip that dispenses coins that is the circus circus you'll find those slot machines right as you come in from the slots of fun there are still two hotels 
hotels in downtown Vegas that do coin slots, the El Cortez and the California. Now the latest fee to hit Las Vegas is reservation fees at restaurants if you want a view table. In particular, at the Top of the World restaurant at the Strat, if you want a view table, you'll have to pay $25 to make that reservation to get a guaranteed view table. Giada also is charging a $25 al fresco dining fee for that $25 view. If you want a view table at the Paris at the Eiffel Tower restaurant, that one's gonna cost you $40. That doesn't go to food or anything, that's just the reservation fee to get that choice table. We're also seeing table games start to disappear from the smaller casinos. For example, a Casino Royale, a Center Strip mainstay, all of their table games that used to be by the food court are gone completely. Good news, the 249 hot dogs are still here. A trend in hotels that the pandemic has certainly accelerated are self-check-in kiosks. If you find the human check-in lines are too long, definitely try to give one of these a go. They don't always work, but you know, if the line looks like a half hour, it's worthwhile talking to Mr. Machine instead. And one positive trend we're seeing in Vegas for sports fans is Vegas is becoming a major sports city, capped off by the fact that the NFL just announced that the Super Bowl in 2020 is going to be hosted in Las Vegas at Allegiant Stadium. And finally, I want to share with you some news about projects that people always ask me about. These are future projects coming in 2023 and beyond, but what better place to talk about the future of Vegas than in front of the past in front of the Plaza Hotel. The first one is the Las Vegas Loop by The Boring Company. That just received approval from the Las Vegas governing bodies to move forward, building 29 miles of tunnels under Las Vegas with 59 stations connecting the airport to the convention center to downtown Las Vegas. That'll be pretty cool. No firm timelines on that yet. One that does have a more firm timeline is the MSG Sphere. This is the concert area, the $1.8 billion project that's a dome concert hall. That'll be pretty cool in 2023. There are some rumors that the Tropicana might be purchased and replaced with a ballpark. No firm news on that yet. And finally, everybody always asks Chris, what about the train from Los Angeles to Las Vegas? You know, the news reports all talk and say it's still in progress, but I don't think we're going to see that one anytime in our lifetimes. The latest news is it's going to go from Las Vegas to Victorville, but who's actually going to ride that if those are the stations? And then of course there's this project, the Drew Fountain Blue Kitty Corner from Circus Circus. This thing is in a never ending state of never happening. So it's another one that's like changed hands 27 times, construction still sort of underway. Now, fellow explorers, if you enjoyed this video, you'll definitely enjoy more of my videos on Las Vegas. You can click here on the screen for my whole playlist, or there's a few other ones here on the screen that you might enjoy watching. You'll also find the link in the description below. As usual, I won't say goodbye, because I'll see you in one of these videos.